Hello everyone, welcome back to our second episode of Deckside Extortionist, where we're going to take a look at some of our old gameplay videos and take a look at plays, politics, and how you and I can become better pilots. Alright, so today we're going to be taking a look at Season 2, Episode 5. This is with Justin Parnell from Commander Versus. Uh, this is his special feature episode where we have a double header. And we're playing with our buddies Alan from Mental Misplay and also Ken from Stack DDH. So first up, we've got Alan on Marin of Clan Nel Toth. This is an old standby deck of his, one that he's been playing for a really long time since Marin came out, I think. Uh, and it's a favorite of his. He's been working on it for years and years. It's got some Hulk piles, I think, still in it these days, and it goes for Necrotic Ooze combos. And I think that there's probably Witherbloom in it now as well. I'm not sure if this uh, deck list that we see on screen here perfectly reflects what we uh, have in the deck list today, but... Um, yeah, it's a it's a Golgari uh, value grinding kind of a deck. Uh, next up, we've got Justin, who is playing Korvald, Faker's King. So uh, Justin obviously works for Star City Games, and uh, he works there with friend of the show, Brayden from uh, CDH Cast, who is uh, one of the builders of the Korvald Faker's King Treasure Storm deck. So uh, J Brayden basically just told him, here, you have to play this deck because this is the best deck. And Justin was like, okay. Uh, we talked before we went on screen because this is like a hard deck to play. And I was like, did Braden like go through a bunch of test rounds with you? And he's like, no, he just gave it to me and told me to pick it up. So this is his very first game ever piloting this deck. Uh, keep that in mind when we're watching this. Uh, next up is me. I'm in third playing Kestis and it makes this is my oldest deck uh, going along with Alan's. This is uh, an older deck list with a lot of pieces that I don't have in the deck anymore. I can see a Yawgmoth's Will in there, Bergy, God of Storms. Um, st storytelling rather, but this is an ad nauseum build and is just going for demonic consultation wins or underworld breach wins. Uh, and last up is Ken playing the deck that we all want to see Ken play, Kraken Sakashima. Uh, best deck in the format, only tier negative 10,000 deck, etc, etc. And let's just hop right into the gameplay. So we're looking at opening hands here. Uh, let's see, Alan has got... It's a pretty, it's a pretty medium hand. He's really hoping for the uh the green mana to be able to cast this elvish mystic or this manglehorn ideally you can cast the elvish mystic on turn one obviously uh, you don't want to play the city of traitors here as your first land because it's going to get immediately nuked by whatever else is coming to play and he doesn't have any huge payoffs in his hand to make this a, a worthy exchange so it, i i assume that we're going to see him play the swamp into the soul ring here and just try to hope for uh the pieces that he needs to be able to play something better uh looking at justin's hand Mm, this is not a hand that I personally would keep in Justin's position. It makes mana, but it doesn't really do anything. Um, but that's sort of the thing with CDH, especially when you're new to it, is that it is, uh, it, it's weird to take a lot of mulligans because your hand is either playable or not pretty much uh, when you're just first taking a look at it and you don't really know the ins, of a and, ins and outs of it. Uh, so this one's got lands, it's a little bit of Accelerant, he can play a Korvald a little bit earlier. So it's not bad, it just doesn't have any gas to continue forward. Uh, taking a look at my hand, it has a very straightforward game plan. Um, I'm just trying to make a load of mana on my first turn and wheel, and I don't care if anyone wheels with me, but I'm definitely going to get seven new cards for sure. I'm assuming that Justin is going to also take a fresh hand here, as Corvault is wont to do, especially if they're going to be able to gas out here. So, uh, And then Ken in last has a pretty serviceable hand. It's nothing to write home about here, but we've got some good pieces. Archmage Emeritus, really strong combo engine for the deck. We've got a turn one Krark uh, if we want to have it. Although we're sacrificing the Jeweled Lotus and we don't necessarily have the turn two Sakashima. So it's not a super great curve here. It's a little bit awkward uh, given our mana sources, but it's it's a serviceable hand for sure. Um, but then let's go ahead and uh, just hop People's into the first turn here. Yeah, I do. I oh, do. there we go. Hell yeah. Rip my bad. Gemstone Caverns. I'm going to get rid of this Odds Veil. A big draw. Hexper. Swamp, Soul Ring, Ship. Yep, so Swamp Soul Ring Ship, that, that makes a lot of sense. Keeping in line with what we know about his hand. Play an ignoble high arc and pass. Just the turn one Dork from Justin, which is um, about what we were expecting. He didn't draw any gas, is pretty much what we're looking at. My friend, let's target you with a Jeska's Will. Oh, that seems extremely oh. good. So, I make a lot of mana here. I love that. I love to hear that, buddy. This is the makings of a turn one win, by the way. 
uh, this sort of hand, especially being able to make all this red mana, th there's not a lot of things that you can dump all of your red mana into when you're playing this deck. There's um, there's like mana rocks, and there's obviously Dockside Extortionist. Extortionist doesn't do anything on this table, of course. But there are fewer red things to dump your mana to into than there are uh, blue and black things that actually win you the game. But the red thing that you can get is the Underworld Breach. If I were to get the Underworld Breach here, it's very possible that I'd just be able to keep looping this Jeska's Will. But it, it depends what else I was able to draw off of it. Two of it and my one floating go down to five. I'd like to cast a Wheel of Misfortune. I'm gonna, I'm gonna respond. <laughs> Exile Elvish Spirit Guide. Nice. For a green. Justin playing play like a pro here. Reveal on nice. Three. Oh wow. Okay, so Cabal Ritual was his his uh, draw for the first turn, which is really interesting. Um, but that was a really sweet thing to be able to do and respond to this wheeler. Very very heads up play by Justin. One. Big fat zero. Ooh. No. <laughs> Me and Justin are both taking six. Okay. Six. It's sick. Can't off to keep his hand. So I'll discard a uh, Mystic Remora and a Rushing Ritual. Which makes sense. I, I literally wrote down I didn't have the blue mana for that um, like, yeah, you know what? Mystic you Remora here, which is yeah, very unfortunate. Yeah. If I had drawn if I had drawn the, the blue source for that Mystic Remora here, I think I easily just put this turn off until turn two so I can land that turn one Remora against Justin. Um, I'm just always going to assume that the, the core ball deck has the turn two extortionist and it's going to make at least six treasures. So I'll always be on the lookout for the core ball deck, no matter what you're doing. I'm not to say that I'm doing a great job of that here, having played out two artifacts and just passing the turn, but I was trying to play to my outs here as best as I could. And this is a deck that rewards you for playing very aggressively like that. Simple. I literally just have a wind swift teeth. Well, Smart. that's nothing I can spend my mana on, unfortunately. Hell yeah. Uh, we love big bummer. Big bummer. There's lots of things that you can potentially, even if it's just mana rocks, it's such a great way to transfer your mana into more gasoline. But here comes Justin. Justin's got the Vampiric Tutor, which of course is good. We all know what that's getting. Shock and esteem vents and go to 38. Oh, that's a little unfortunate, but. Yeah, that means he definitely can't play any artifacts. No, I am going to play an artifact because you got to, and I don't want to spoil the fun for my. <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm sorry, let me just let Ken finish what he was about to say. No, I am going to play an artifact, because you got to, and I don't want to spoil <laughs> the fun for myself. So, I'm also... going to... So, this is the thing, is that there's a certain psychology to being the person in last and not wanting to miss out on playing your accelerants on turn one behind the threat of a Dockside Extortionist when you don't know that there's a Dockside Extortionist coming. We... We don't know that there's a Dockside Extortion is coming, but it, it's, I think anyone here can guess that this Vampiric Tutor is going for the Dockside Extortion is to put that on top of the library right now. But again, to talk to playing towards your outs and making some semi-risky plays in the face of more risk. Sometimes you just have to play out the rocks. You just have to put people to the test. Sometimes you just have to make some sacrifices, like giving a player a little bit more advantage to not disadvantage your own self. because. When you're thinking about just playing a land and passing here for Ken and doing effectively, I mean, we don't know if he's going to play the Krark out here. I suspect he doesn't play the Krark out here, but just playing a Steam Vents and passing the turn is puts him so far behind these three other players at the table that I think I agree with him that it does behoove him to play out some artifacts. Of course, I'm going to tell him, as the person who went before him and played out two artifacts, he can't play anymore because we all know that uh, Korvald only needs five to go infinite. But it is what it is. I, In Ken's position, I'm doing the same thing. Absolutely, no questions. And I am simply going to pass it up. On taps, big draws. Let's get it. Okay, this is gonna go on top. I got basic planes for anyone wondering. Buy you. Good pick for your vampiric root maze under this chrome box. Why are you doing that? Why yeah, with a dock side coming up. That's a that's an interesting. I, I got. This is this is a very interesting play here. I. We don't know what's in Alan's hands, so we don't know what he's playing towards here. Um, but man, the root maze is a really perfect thing to be thrown down in front of that dock side. Basic planes is what I said. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> right though. Never mind. It was basic yeah, planes. Is coming. We all know it. Yeah, I just, I'm worried about wasteland. Mm -hmm. uh, I figured I I didn't of think them. of 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 dock side getting windmilled onto the table. Honestly, I thought of <laughs> no. I thought of you thought of I basic thought of, planes. 
No, I thought of Dan being five turns ahead of me right now. That's um, true. Yes. That again, is this is happened. this is the oh, psychology right. of the dock side oh, and turn order and all of this stuff. I I'm not that much farther ahead in this turn, uh, like just in the game than Alan is. Alan has more colored mana sources than me at this point now that he's played out both of these artifacts. But even just playing out land and having the soul ring on board, we've got roughly the same amounts of mana and his is arguably more useful being more colors. Um, but he doesn't want to put himself behind at the table and just lose to the fear of a dock side that might not be coming. So just trying to play to the best of his outs here, even if it looks a little bit sketchy and Hindsight being twenty twenty, you always want that root maze in front of the core vault, but um, sometimes you just got to play to your outs. You know a good way to counteract <laughs> me being five turns ahead of you is letting the person to your right win the game on their turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, we ain't kingmaking. Yeah. What are we doing? You know? <laughs> yeah, anybody in the chat with your kingmaker emotes? Look, oh, I God. have I have a simple country goblin shaman and two lands. This is one of my favorite graphics I've made for any video of all time. It's just it's nothing special to it. I just I heard him say that. And I immediately thought of American Gothic. I slapped their heads on the air. Made me really happy. It's true. <laughs> no one has ever won the game with just three mana on Core Vault. Correct. <laughs> uh, probably not going to happen today. Yeah. That's something I really love about this deck is how unassuming it looks. Like, if you look at this board right now like justin kind of looks like he's behind almost right but like we just know that there's a dockside extortionist on top of his deck and it's just gonna be so explosive <laughs> but to the uninitiated two there's two lands in the noble hierarch Ooh, yeah, yeah. okay so, I'll it from there. big pass all right they're playing out survival here alan wants to be playing towards a hulk win he could maybe do it as quick as turn three i don't know what's in his hand of course after this wheel um, but he activates once. I wonder if he just goes and gets the Hulk. I guess he would have to hard cast it. So maybe maybe the line here is that he would have to um, get Hulk and then put the Hulk in the bin and get something else to reanimate it. Uh, so that's going to take him at least this and his next coming turn, which, you know, is not slow, but I it can be too slow. Planes. Yep. Well, uh, fortunately, I had a better, better land in hand, so I'll play this exotic orchard okay yeah that makes sense okay. it's, it's, it's mildly just mm -hmm. like it's just a little bit better i just happen to have this dockside extortionist yep that's There's suspicious curse yep that's weird mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that's the plane's weird. still in my hand uh, dan, looks, the plane's still in my hand i'm telling you dan i'm doing nothing about that dockside extortionist I I appreciate this about Ken and the way that he plays, uh, where he's playing a blue deck and it's got so many control pieces in it, and he's just like, fuck you, I don't have any pieces in my hand right now, so you better do something about it. Um, I, I don't know if Ken encounters a lot of priority bullying, but he definitely, uh, he's he's given me these speeches before it, <laughs> that make me believe that he's been priority bullied many times and he's not going to let himself be priority bullied now, but I... I had just a handful of bunk. I don't remember what was in it, but man, you heard how bummed I was and how I did not cast anything having my five red mana. So and, um, I, was, I don't know if you heard the sounds that I make when I drew my seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not wheel into the withering boon, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Alan's favorite yeah. Thoracle yeah. tech. Yeah. The withering boon. Yeah, one, two, three, yeah, like four, five, six. Good to go. Six. Yeah, two for right. me. Woo. Woo. Six is enough. Sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> All right. Indeed. Let's start with Corvold. How does everybody feel about that? Good? Feeling good? I, yeah. I'm f sexed. We'll sack this uh, dock side draw card. That's usually a sign of the end times. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's the it's the start times. So wh what I what I mean here when I say that that is a sign of the end times is that um, Justin is very much sending the signal that he is going to win the game right now. If you are not planning on winning this game at this very moment, you might sacrifice your ignoble hierarch here. It puts you down a mana on your next turn but it could be more important to keep your dockside on the battlefield rather than in a graveyard where someone can exile it. Potentially Alan's got death, right? Shaman. And um, there are, I guess some other ways that we might be able to uh, mess with it while it's in his graveyard. But yeah, going for the dockside here, definitely putting out yeah, the signals true. that we are about to win <laughs> the game. Somebody start times. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Let's go here. We're going to make a black up here. We'll draw a card. We're Brain going to I... culling the weak oh, no. on this high arc, uh, mm -hmm. spin the black, make the black. Let's turn this into red, red, mm -hmm. and I'll draw. 
Uh, actually, excuse me. I'm going to be red-green. Maybe red-green. Okay. Yeah. And I'll draw two. Diversifying the mana here, I think, is a really smart yeah. choice. Um, there are certain things that we still want to be playing around in Justin's position, and one of the things that you're going to leave yourself open to with that green mana is the Veil of Summer or the uh, Veil of Autumn. But here we see Justin immediately getting the engine online of just sacrificing and reanimating Korvald. To turn one of these into a green draw, uh, turn this into a black draw. Did you go up from five to six, Treasure? I did, on exit. Yes, sorry, four. Yep. We're going to do two here. Uh, nice. draw two. Yep. Magic be hard. Jeweled Lotus. Uh, we're going to sacrifice this. This is commander mana. It's going to be... One thing yeah. that's nice yeah. about this Corval deck is that even in these late stages, right. the uh, Jeweled Lotus, Lotus is a fine draw because it's just Lotus. another free draw. wonder what those cards could be. <laughs> um, planes. Bunch of planes. Bunch of planes. <laughs> you, sh you should take some of those out of your deck. Yeah, I would cut. Yeah, I, I, I put. I, I got again. I got the deck from Braden. He just put. He, he put so many planes in here. <laughs> <laughs> Braden, notably off of the Tana pack now, I guess. Yep, because multiple planes. I got mm -hmm. you. Picking that up. Yes, right. thank you. That was my my CEDH joke for the night. Red. Yep. Uh, oh. Skirt. Pro skirt. <laughs> nice. Skirt, the skirt prospector. Yeah. Uh, That's super here scary. For, uh, so this is where the uh, the loop really starts to come into action. If he can get uh, just the uh, dread return now, he's uh, able to go uh, infinite on mana. Spend. Uh, Three black. Or okay, not dread return, I'm sorry. Um, and then two. I don't remember if it's Shallow Grave or what it's called. The reanimation spell will buy back. Calling Ritual is an interesting pivot point in this game because now this is turning off the dock side, which is something you really need to keep in mind when you're playing this spell in this deck, is that it'll power you through the middle of a turn like this, but it is now shutting off your ability to use dock side as a win out in the game. And they're... There's a misconception that without Dockside that this deck just completely folds in half and doesn't do anything. Uh, and that's it. It's true in the sense that this is the very easiest way that this deck just wins the game. It's the game. It's the way that every deck just wins the game very easily. You know, like Dockside really just takes the math out of the equation and really takes the guesswork out of anything because it was just such a powerful spell. So there's no, going to be no more access to the Dockside here, but it's not going to matter with the amount of mana that you can create as long as you have something to transfer that mana into. For the Culling Ritual, I'll activate this. Ad nauseum, Peer into the Abyss, sure. Necropotence, Scallion. all of these spells are very, very live. A necrotic ooze. I'll play Orcish Lumberjack here. I'll play Death Rite. All right, now these cards are the sign that you're going to pass the turn. Nobody is going to play out uh, multiple dorks in a row like this. Unless they're setting up for something, but in Korvald, this is very much a sign that Justin is gonna pass the turn here if we're just transferring mana into more into more mana sources for next turn. Oh, what? <laughs> but this <laughs> this is the other turning point of this game is that Justin casts the Spirit of the Abyss. I think you're fine. You're fine. I think you're good, man. What are we talking about? I, I, if I target myself, I die though. So I think that Justin thought that. Um, he was going to target one of us with this spell here, and it's a good thing he cast it, because like otherwise it would have just been in his hand. Why? Why? I think. How no. many cards do I have? You just you just draw. Oh, half dude, half, half their life. Oh yeah, shit. Oh, oh, for some reason I thought it was one per. I just didn't read. The so card. little mistake here. Oh, Justin misses out on no, uh, four extra mana that he could have in his pool uh, after this nice, pier, but this is turn two. He's gonna draw at least forty cards here. I think. Uh, might be a little bit less because we've already been drawing off of Corvald. Ritual breach. Oh, that's I mean, true. The, yeah. Yeah. Black also finds more reanimation effects, though, right? For yeah, well, that's that's that's, that's what I was thinking. I oh, but Doc. I'm sorry. Let me rewind that for a second because we're having you're looking for ritual a breach. We have an important little a, conversation here. I'm gonna I think leave a, you I'll leave a black red, probably because you're looking for ritual a breach. Oh, that's I mean, true. The, yeah. Yeah. Black also. So at this point, all that. Justin needs to win is that Underworld Breach. And of course, <laughs> let's just talk about the, the win the game on easy mode red spells in the format. Um, but yes, if we can find the Underworld Breach here, that's going to be our key to victory. So rather than going for black for another ritual spell, which is likely, we have to think about what colors of mana do what kinds of things in this deck post Peer into the Abyss. So if we make black mana into more black mana with our dark rituals, I guess we already spent the Cabal ritual, dark ritual and something else that I'm not thinking of. If we can make a lot of black mana, those are going to be reanimation spells. We got Dockside in the bin, but like we said before, we've already had the uh, the culling 
ritual will go off. So Dockside no longer an option. So we're not looking for reanimation spells. It can transfer us into spells like Ad Nauseam or Necropotence, which is more gas. But again, we're drawing 40 cards here, so we should be able to find everything we need. Green is going to be our protection spell, but nobody's drawing any cards. No one's no one's uh, not letting this peer into the Abyss resolve, so we're safe there. So the thing that we're left with here is the red mana, which is going to be uh, just mainly for this underworld breach is like pretty much exactly what we're trying to find here. So finds more reanimation effects though, right? For yeah, that's yeah, that's that's, that's what I was thinking. I oh, but Dockside's off because of the calling right. I forget. Yes. I forget. I forget. Yeah, there's no, there's no. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll leave. I'm, I'm gonna leave a red. Okay. I got a lot of cards now. Yeah. As it turns out. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I am going to play Chrome Mox. I'm going to exile this Abrupt Decay. I'm going to play a Lotus Petal. Yeah, here comes all the free rocks. So we are diversifying the colors of mana that we can make here now. And this is pretty much going to mean that there's nothing that we can't cast. Yeah, he just drew absolutely everything. So all we got to do is spend a tutor or play the Underworld Breach. I, I literally, I just misread Pierre. Like I said, I've, never, I've not played this deck before. <laughs> that I when I said that I can't believe that Justin thought he was gonna pass here, uh, it's just the the stark contrast between the relief that I felt of him casting the mana dorks and passing, and then the <laughs> compared to now where he just got out five free artifacts and is about to win the entire game. I'm just doing my best. You're doing, you're doing great, really good. You're 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 stomping on our heads. And I couldn't be any more yeah, impressed, honestly. Yeah, this is his very first game of CDH. Thing. Like I just have a I just have a. He's a great cards, EDH player, things, mind but, you. Uh, um. But so do you have an underworld breaching here? This is a hard deck to play. Have a tutor? I think, yeah, I do. There so I go. think what you would want to do at this point is get your underworld breach and then use. So uh, we do see Justin punished here for going for the red mana rather than the black mana because we don't have the underworld breach in hand. Uh, but we uh, do have a tutor to go find it. So the, the if we only had that black mana available, it would have been a better source for us to have open. And that's another thing to speak to when we have to just think about what colors are doing what in this deck and what we need to find. Um, but thankfully, uh, we already had the Arcane Signet app before all this happened, so we had the ability to make at least two colors of mana. And now with all of these other spells, there's just no question that we just have everything we need. You want to find uh, grinding stations so you can grind Praetor's Grasp into your graveyard, and then you can just steal Thassa's Oracle out of my library uh, to win the game. Okay. That, seems, that seems pretty legit. It sounds very easy when you say it like that, but like going through these lines uh, as a Corvo player, especially as a person who's never played this deck before, it's so um, it's so difficult. You get to these points where you're looking at the massive cards in your hand and you think to yourself, well, I just have so many cards, I must be able to win. And you're very correct. If, if you can just amass enough cards with Corvald, you will win. It's very similar to Kark and Sakashima, actually, in that respect. If you can just amass the card... Uh, the card advantage you will be able to transfer that into enough rituals and gas to be able to pull yourself through the game because that's all the deck is designed to do is just make mana draw cards win the game mm-hmm. yeah. okay okay so like a demonic uh, tutor it's a- yeah i don't have a demonic tutor but i do have oh i do have a demonic i just have so many cards in my hand i'm not <laughs> yeah. try- I'm, i literally am not trying to flex when i say that no, no, no that's uh, i literally I'm just, just, we're all so proud of him yeah. especially me and ken as we're corval both corval players at this point ken i think is off of corval these days but i still got corval in my heart good peer from 40 that's nice that's possible mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that yeah. was that was that was that was not bad super clean I remember when Justin had three lands. I do, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. I remember this that. This is on. This is on top. I'm gonna sacrifice this for a red. I'll draw a card. Nice. Play this. I have a colorless. There you I'm go. Not gonna, I'm not gonna need this. This commander mana. Uh, so I'll, I'll use this. Even though I explained to Justin Soaring. how he can win the yeah, game Soaring. here, I'm still having him go Soaring. through the motions, uh, not only to Station. help his nice. own ability to play this deck, okay, but also so for the audience's Station. sake because this is a weird deck and it might not be super obvious how it you works. Can use it immediately to like grind away your mana crypt or something. And basically what you yeah. can do is keep playing that from your graveyard, generating mana with it. You've also got your Lion's Eye But the easy mode with it here is that we're just going to have Justin mill his whole graveyard with the um, grinding station. Praetor's Grass me, take my Thassa's Oracle, cast the Thassa's Oracle, win the game. Uh, we yeah, do just sort of skip by it at the end here and don't, like, I kind of wish that we had let him go through a couple yeah, of grinding have, station loops. Because sometimes you mill over things that really make you start to think and you just have to not even think about what's going on and just need to keep going for the same game plan. Um, but I think like I think it would help anyone's understanding of how this deck works and really um, how to do some more interesting and intricate 
underworld breach loops if you go through some grinding station loops because it is uh it's it's a more complicated card than it seems on its face and it is very interesting the way that it can pivot a game it's a very very good card i can well i need to not that cast anyone this. need to hear <laughs> that it's oh, yeah. everyone knows oh, yeah. it's a great card but okay so i have yeah. i'm gonna make so i'll make three black draw a card uh i'll just play this since i drew it uh then i will remove uh one two three i recast uh, I guess I need to, with the trigger on the stack, I will mill myself. Yeah, nice. You gotta sacrifice me. Sure, I'll sacrifice this. Yeah, see, this is kind of what I was saying, is that it's nice to let the player, even though we've explained how he's going to win the game, it's nice to let him go through a couple of these loops here, just to really, really get it into your brain exactly how this card is going to work and how you're going to win the game. Dan, I'll just target you. Yeah, I will, I will get the Oracle. Um, yeah. I'm I'm good to scoop to that if everybody else is. I want oh. to give that out. Yeah, I think Absolutely. I can. I think I've, I figured it out. For yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. All Hell right. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Everyone loves All a right. good, clean turn two Jeez. win on their first game of CDH right. with Corvald. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. All you right, I feel good. Really first one in. Well. Thank you guys for helping me through the uh, the end there. You did great. You did yeah. great. Yeah, we got to that weird point where it's like, okay, we can't just win with Docs anymore. Even if we could, it's still that same like th same thing as the. Game. It's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Oh, it's a hard yeah, deck to play. No, uh, kudos no, to like all the Corvald pilots yeah, out there yeah, because it's yeah, not an easy thing to do. Um, and big shout out to Justin here who like piloted this actually like super super well. Just him going through him going through all of those loops in the beginning, just with the calling the week and all of that stuff on his own. He was really playing a lot of things very heads up. The Cabal ritual in response to the wheel. He's he's like. Yeah, don't just because they main casual over on the Commander versus channel, like definitely don't let that fool you into thinking that he's not like a really, really good player. All right, so that's going to do it for our second episode of Dexide Extortionist. Thanks for hanging out. Um, shout out to all the guests in the video there. It was a super awesome time playing with Justin. Of course, love ha uh, hanging out with Alan and Ken anytime that I can. So big shout outs to them. Go check out the link down below. I'll link all of their work so you can find uh, them all over the internet. And uh, yeah, thanks once again for hanging out with me on the Dexhead Extortionist. Share this video if you like it. Um, new thing that I'm trying out, so trying to get more people uh, watching it. And yeah, if you liked it, leave a comment down below. Let me know another video that you'd like me to take a look at. Anyone that you want me to get on the channel, I definitely would like to get Ken to, on here to talk about Kark and Sakashima. Get Alan on here to talk about Marin. And just really find out what kinds of things players are thinking about when they're playing their decks. So yeah, let me know who you want to see on the channel and what episodes you want to see, and we'll see you next time.